Hello. So how is it going? It's good to see so many people here already. Hey, Adrian. Hi, from Boston. You're the first one. MV, hello. Hello, everyone. Let me step a little bit backwards just to make sure my head is not cut off, you know, by the screen. Let me check. Is that all right? <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, let me come over. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you for joining us uh, tonight. We are cooking borscht. Borscht. We call it borscht. I believe it's not very easy to pronounce, but it's very easy to eat and enjoy. If you have any questions, we still have 13 minutes before the tour starts. Um, you are welcome. So I see that for some reason, connection uh, just drop and then it's back again. Let me know if everything is fine with the connection. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. Good, good morning. Oh, yeah. So we over. So. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. My mom is really excited. You know, after that Pelveni tour, she actually asked me if uh, we, when we when we're gonna do the the, the Borsch tour. She really likes it. Is it possible to freeze Borsch? А можно замораживать Борщ? Uh, so my mom says, but I, I've never thought of it myself actually. But my mom says it's not going to be really, really tasty. So it doesn't really make. About that. Just realized what happened to the Wi-Fi. There are two Wi-Fi networks that kind of compete together. So I've just disabled one, so it should be fine. Should be very soon, but I might need to switch from Wi-Fi to just data just in case. But let me know if you'll have any if you have any issues with the connection. So no, we cannot freeze Borsch. <laughs> So it seems like it's all okay. So um, let's go over the questions. Okay, here now. Well, it shows me like four out of five, four out of five. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, if we disconnect, we will get back on data very soon. <laughs> no sound. Um, is anybody else experiencing issues with the sound? Лиз тоже говорит привет, все говорят привет. Привет, 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 everyone. <laughs> привет всем. So, no, you kind of freeze borscht that we already got. Yes, borscht is, is the perfect kind of dish for cold weather. However, you can actually find a cold borscht as well. And before the tour starts, I will also tell you how to cook a vegetarian or even, yeah, even a vegan option. But we are cooking the one with meat, as you might have already guessed it from the uh, tour description. Oh, yeah, when my signal died, obviously, yeah, there would be no sound. It's... Hi, Clive, good to see you. Barbara, Barbara and the kitties. <laughs> Hello. So um, I'm going to tell my mom about Barbara. Barbara is вот, the uh, same uh, my uh, my guest, who has two cats, who is constantly waking up at uh -huh. 4 I was just told my mom about the kitties, Charlie and Rosie, waking you up for food at around 4.45, right? <laughs> well, good morning to whom it may concern, and good morning, Barbara, but hopefully you'll be able to get back to sleep soon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that is so that is so lovely to have you all um just let me well so we have time let's not waste it i just want to show you a little bit what we've got here 
um, I also haven't mentioned it on the tour description with the ingredients. You can, uh, for those who are going to cook along, it would be a good idea to start peeling the beetroot and uh, carrots. Yes, and potatoes. So we've just done it like in advance. My mom is, she likes preparing, you know, she's getting ready. So other than that, uh, everything is fine. So, and uh, yeah, and the onion. So you can start or peeling it off, but again, it won't take much time. And we haven't started yet. I'm just telling you what we've got. And here we have the broth. It's been, uh, it's been for about one, it's been uh, here on the stove for about one hour, 40 minutes. So the longer you cook it, the better. Yeah. And we've got, as, as it's mentioned in the, uh, in the tour description, so we've got one carrot and the onion, and we're going to get rid of them very soon. Look at my mom's dress. I so love it. She looks like the girl from Austin Powers, like the girl from the 60s. <laughs> I love it. And I think she's got really the, the best apron possible that really fits, just matches all the colors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then we've got the ring lamp and just a little bit of backstage. That I've never thought about really freezing the borscht when it's cooked, but I believe you can basically freeze all the ingredients. Let me ask my mom. А если, например, все нарезать, подготовить, а потом заморозить просто отдельные продукты, также можно, наверное? Картошка не будет в мороженое виде вкусная. Она будет не вкусная. Ah. Да. So Лучше that... покупать готовые шинкованные в магазине, uh -huh. тогда можно будет одновременно все так же. Ничего страшного. Uh -huh. Это некогда. Uh -huh. Это некогда. So my mom, who's a real expert uh, in Russian version of borscht, so she says that freezing potato is not very good because it will lose all the taste, like everything at all. So you can always buy it like, I mean, like grated, for example, like you can buy grated cheese, you can buy, I'm sure you can buy, you can buy grated carrots or basically diced vegetables. But uh, I should tell you that other than like, apart from cooking the meat, that really much, that really takes much time. It's really very a quick, quick dish. There might be like some ingredients. Some may think that there's even like too many ingredients, but I believe it's just not really as much as it could be. And uh, today I'll be also telling you a bit more about the differences between like Russian and Ukrainian borscht. So <laughs> yeah, because well, the Ukrainian borscht, especially some really old, um, versions and old recipes, they are really super difficult to cook with, I don't know, like from 15 to, I don't know, I know a borscht about 17 ingredients there with like three kinds of meat. Rafael, you're here! Mom, Rafael, Turk, who was just watching from Pompeii. Oh, Yeah, so my mom says hello to you. Ciao! Ciao. 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 Yeah, so she really enjoyed the tour. We just watched Raphael's tour. Um, if you haven't seen it, well, you, make sure you book the next one. That's been such a pleasure. And the, the sun, the nature, um, and the story. I've been translating some, some, some bits of the tour. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you so much for an amazing experience in Pompeii. <laughs> uh, potatoes would get mushy. Potatoes would get... I don't know, really not good. Like, no, definitely you can't really freeze potatoes. Uh, yes, Margaret, I would say that... How often do you do this borscht, in principle? Well, about once a month, once a month. Yes, I think so. There are other soups. So my mom says that now she makes borscht about she... once, once a month, That's but nice. she says that there are so many other kinds of uh, soups like one more that is very difficult to pronounce, like she, S C H C H I, I believe, but I'm not, I can't really say. I don't think there is like only one version of how you would really spell the word, but, uh, and there are many, many other soups. But what from, I remember from my childhood is that we used to have borscht, I don't know, like once a week 
and I would never eat it, of course. I don't think really many kids eat borscht. Я же не ела борщ в детстве. Дети вообще супы не учат. Yes. Я борщи тоже. Все, yes. что связано с капустой и с морковкой, детей не заставишь. Mm-hmm. So my mom says that kids in general, well, not really big soup lovers. I'm not sure about, uh, about like, kids all over the world, but from my experience, this is true. <laughs> so um, for those who have kids, or maybe you remember from your childhood, did you like soups? And what do you think, like, Would you have tried it if you had been given a chance back when you were kids? So Tracy, oh Tracy, hi again, good to Hello. see you. Hey, um, um, uh, so my grandmother used to make this for me all the time. Бабушка Трейси готовила борщи все время. И она, конечно, скучает по бабушке на еде. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course, of course. So this kind of memories about the the food we had when we were kids, it's yeah, for most of us it is connected, it's absolutely associated with our grandparents and their cooking and nobody can cook just just the way our grandparents and parents do it did it. This is true. <laughs> your ch- oh Catherine, so your children tease you about liking borscht. <laughs> Would they like to try it? <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. So much fun. Raphael, by the way, can you find some Russian food in Italy? I was in Italy once for my honeymoon, but I, I don't remember seeing any Russian food, any like, Russian place there. Well, I was mostly in Tuscany, but I don't know, maybe somewhere else you can find some, some borscht, even maybe a cold a uh, cold version of the borscht. They think that the color is too wild. Well, the color is pretty natural. So beetroots, they come in this color. And well, this is quite fascinating. I mean, yeah, there are not so many kinds of soups you can find of this color, but borscht can also come with spinach and we call it green borscht. The yellow green zelone borscht. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there is green borscht and green shi. Yes, yeah, so they uh, m- most so this Russian uh, soup called shi. Mm-hmm. So some people just those who don't really like beetroot, they can just make some. They can just choose something else, obviously. But yes, this is probably the wildest soup if you can find in terms of the color. This is true. Yeah, and I know that um, I'm not sure. Probably, probably it's the same thing all all over the world. For for example, for dumplings or maybe some other kinds of stuff that you make with a dough, um, that you for kids they would add beetroot and carrots and spinach and tomatoes for colors. So we actually in Russia we pretty often use this just to give some color to the dough, like to dumplings, to make kids eat it. But my kid would never buy it. So he just would never eat anything with meat and he definitely would never eat borscht. Well, it's very soon, we're starting very soon. My mom needs to clear her throat. Have some water, papi vodichki. And let me, let's see if it's all right here. Ah. Нет, подожди, еще рано. Окей, uh, okay. this, this should be fine, I believe. Сейчас я проверю, как я там смотрюсь. I need to check if my head is not going to be cut off. Я буду, наверное, с этой стороны. Is that all right? I won't be uh, cooking too much. I'll be mostly filming mom, but... I'll be assisting my mom. So she's the chef <laughs> tonight. She's always my chef. Okay, let me check if everything is fine. Because obviously from there, I can't see a thing. <laughs> da, Virginia says da, so хорошо. Okay, сейчас поприветствуем, потом уже начнем. So hello, hello everyone. Hello, so this is me, Anna, and this is my mom. Olga? Yes, her name is Olga. She doesn't speak English, but so 
I will, I will be translating for her, so I'll be her assistant tonight. We're cooking borscht. In the description uh, to this tour, I inform you for those who would like to cook along and for those who uh, cook the meat version, not vegetarian option, then uh, about one and a half hours in advance or just maybe a day before uh, needed to make the broth, so the, uh, the beef broth. And we have just cooked it. It took us about one hour, 45 minutes. Let me show you. <laughs> oh, Liz, thank you so much. Yes, my mom's dress, my mom's apron. That's right. <laughs> this is so cool. Mom, you look so cool. We have compliment to it. I told her uh, just before the tour started that my mom looks like the Austin Powers girl, you know, from the very first film. Oh, right. So this is the broth that took us about one hour, 45 minutes. Well, one hour, 30 minutes is enough. So there is beet, uh, beef and there is also carrots and onion. Well, we've just taken out the meat oh, about 10 minutes ago. And then we need to get rid of onions and carrots understanding them okay so and we need to uh we need to turn uh turn the stove on so because we got we need it to be boiling so we like it when uh, when the meat when the when the beef well for borscht we like it when there is a bone also and meat it makes your broth and soup then, as a result, uh, rich. But the good idea is that when you boil the meat for the first time, you just you just skim it, right? You skim the foam, uh, and then you get rid of the water, and then you add just one more water. We call it uh, baking broth on the second second water. Oh, the meat's been there. I thought you've taken out. I couldn't even see the meat there. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. I couldn't even see it there. That's cool. That's how thick and rich the broth is. What part of beef? Uh, mm -hmm. So basically, it should be any kind of uh, beef that has uh, sort of both. Yeah, there should be both some bone and some meat on it. Basically any part. Ba basically any, any any part of beef. Okay, so and now our um, our broth is being heated up so because we need to for it to start boiling and my mom is going to shred the cabbage. Yes. Yeah, thank you for asking, King. Um, Queen. Oh, the kid is coming because he smells meat. <laughs> so uh, basically shredding cabbage. So you start with cabbage. That's how it should be done. I also promised to tell you <laughs> the utensil holder. You like it. <laughs> Thank you so much. My mom has some really fun stuff here. So um, the, you can cook borscht also without any meat. So basically, you just skip the, the broth part at all. And you just use water. And then you just start adding ingredients the way we do it now. So basically, you skip meat at all. Uh, to make your vegetarian borscht, uh, richer you can just add more vegetables you can add more cabbage you can add more uh, beetroot more potatoes more carrots uh, you can even add some some other herbs and spices so that's definitely i think it's basically uh, you're at liberty to, to add nearly anything to your borscht so that's how we shred it. It should be really, really nicely shredded. It might really take some time because the idea is that when the soup is ready, the cabbage should be very soft, nearly like, you know, melting, disappearing on your tongue, in your mouth. So that's, that's how it should go. And also borscht, you can have borscht, just like I said uh, shortly before the tour started. Uh, you, you can even, you can even, uh, cook it and serve it cold. You just basically need to... How do you cook it with a hot pot? So you just and you don't If it's not possible, it's not possible. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mom says that if you want the vegetarian, so the vegetarian borscht can uh, can be served cold. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course, obviously, uh, the classical recipe of borscht is with meat. Uh huh. So uh, mom says that probably this is like too much of cabbage, so they probably she's not gonna use all the cabbage, but there should be like really a lot of cabbage. Она наверное, еще водички добавить, да, можно или не обязательно? Mm -hmm. So and if you, if it seems to you that there is not really enough uh, broth, you know, because when you boil it, it evaporates. If you if you feel like you should add more water, feel free to do that. That's all right. Mm, okay, okay, so this is a little bit extra. So, uh, before getting down to potatoes and beetroot and, and carrots, well, of course, you peel them. We peel them shortly before the tour. So, mm -hmm. uh huh. So you see that but very, very soon the broth will start boiling. So it is all right like if you add cabbage, well, just the two minutes before it starts boiling. So the idea is you should really boil the cabbage. Before it starts boiling, well, we still have time to just cut the meat. So, the uh, yeah, you just, uh, you're going to add uh, this meat in the very end when everything is ready and look what we've got a guest here <laughs> his name is Tioma. simon simon the cat simon the cat hi simon <laughs> yes soma needs some meat uh barbara is charlie are charlie and rosie watching so Simon says hi to Charlie and Rosie and all the kitties are watching the tour. Soma, 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 are you coming? Soma, Soma. Okay, so just only because it's a special, it's a special day. <laughs> we're gonna give some, we're gonna give some meat to Simon. I mean, beef is okay. Soma, <laughs> you're будешь? Simon, have some beef. <laughs> oh, please just don't do it on the chair. Just don't do it on the chair. Please don't. Yes, that's right. Simon is a rescue. Uh, I found him many years ago. He was just about to die. He was like a very small kitten. And now he's grown into a, a big, big kitty. Okay. Uh huh. So, oh, yeah. Подожди пока, давай потом его положим, да, чуть-чуть попозже. Угу, угу. Окей, so me is ready. Now we are waiting for, for the cabbage. Hold on a moment. Uh-huh, it's just... Угу, mm -hmm. very good. So Simon is happy. <laughs> This is great. Mom has an, one more kitty, but she's probably sleeping. Okay. Okay, now we get down to grating. Yeah, so my mom is using special grater that is normally used for like Korean carrots. No, but basically you can use any grater. А можно, например, делать в блендере? Измельчители? Или это будет как пюре? I'm just, I'm just asking my mom if you can... Uh-huh, uh-huh, понятно. So I've just asked my mom if... If it's okay to just use a blender, just to blend carrots, but she said it would be like a puree or something. So, no, just grate in it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, any kind. A раз размер сложен? Широкая терка нет? Нет, не важно. All right. Uh -huh. ну да, я сказала, что это корейская. So basically, any any grater would do. Just don't make it a puree, you know. You have that in the U.S. Uh, mandolin, <laughs> mandolin. 
Amazing. А, а у них такая терка называется в США как мандалина. Да? That's interesting. <laughs> so, ты, ты не торопись, пожалуйста. Я же должна еще сказать. So, and now my mom has just done... Where she's finished with the carrots, she's getting down to beetroot. Mom, не торопись, пожалуйста. <laughs> okay, the so mom is really quick. <laughs> Not to be confused with the musical instrument, of course. But, you know, for us, like um, it's just like mandolin is the only translation is mandolina, like the musical instrument. Is there any reference? I've never, I've never heard of a special word for um, for the Korean uh, carrot grater, but of course there there must be one. Thank you so much, thank you so much for telling me this. Well, it's like sometimes it's really interesting. Like you've been calling a certain thing this way, but you never really you never really given it a second thought. Of uh, being a linguist, I should tell you that um, there is so much more hidden behind the names of everyday things, well, like borscht that we are cooking. So where does this word come from? Well, actually, well, when I described, when I, um, in the description to the tour, uh, I mentioned that this is both Russian and Ukrainian soup. Actually, it's Ukrainian and Russian soup. It comes from Ukraine. So it originated like really many centuries ago. And it came to Russia in around like 19th century, basically. So it's definitely a Ukrainian dish. But of course, what we are cooking is sort of a Russian version of it. But the name, it comes from the Ukrainian language. Basically, it's um, the etymology of the word is pretty easy. So borscht, there is a, there is a certain plant called borshevik. Uh, but borshevik comes in two versions, like the poisonous one and not the poisonous one. So nowadays, there is mostly poisonous borshevik that, that grows like everywhere and it's a big problem uh, all across russia it's like one of the let's see one of the big issues for agriculture so but the other version was used uh when cooking borscht like long time ago so you, you just you would you would you would add this plant you would add all the other vegetables that you you had and of course the beets so speaking of the beets again Basically, just one average, uh, yeah, one medium-sized beet, uh, beetroot would be really enough, but you can add more, especially if you're cooking vegetarian borscht. So, yeah, so that's exactly thanks to this color. What is the shade? I'm, I don't think it's purple. What, what would be the shade? I'm used to saying like it's purple, but maybe there is even a better word. Uh, the borscht, <laughs> but the borscht shade, <laughs> I don't really know. So um, is anybody cooking along with us? Just just let me know. We're not in a hurry. It normally takes about 40 minutes when everything is, when everything is cooked. Well, uh-huh. Ah. Uh -huh. So, one of the know-how from my mom, which I didn't know, by the way, so she never told me about this, is that if you have any leftovers of the of the beets, if look at the shade, so it's getting it's getting it's giving it's giving the color. So you can add those bits, or if you think that there is too much of shredded beets, and you can and you have some leftovers, just this uh, part of the beet, you can just freely put it into the broth for color. And then when everything is ready, it's up to you. You can take it out or you can just eat it because, you know, uh, boiled, cooked beet is, uh, is, very, is very good for you, for your digestive system. Uh, very good. It's one of the number one laxative as well. <laughs> Absolutely natural, 100% organic. Yeah, look, just changing colors. Amazing. I love this. I'm the glass of I've seen yet. So, um, according to Italian cooking side, the cooking prep mandolin got its name because the hand gesture and similar when you play instrument. 
Oh, well, thank you so much, Liz. Thank you for looking it up. Вот Лиз говорит, что движения, которые вот на этой терке корейской, они похожи на движение руки на мандалине. So amazing. Thank you so much, Liz. So that's real eye opener. <laughs> wow. So you see, it's well, nearly the borscht like color. Nearly. <laughs> Did carrots and beans get added? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, but very soon. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Karen. No, we are, we are on it. Uh, someday I will give you my recipe of Cullen's King, which is in Scottish smoked haddock soup. Smoked haddock soup, James? Sorry, what is haddock? Um, haddock, haddock. Well, that sounds really interesting. Is it like um, a national dish in Scotland? That's so interesting. Smoked. Can you really smoke food at home? Like, I don't know, is there any home smokers or whatever you call it? Hado is a fish. Okay, well, of course, fish. Когда мы добавляем морковку? А, подожди тогда. So, while I, I, I was just telling you about... Подожди, подожди. So, I was telling you about the bits and we were discussing this mandolin thing. My mom... Um, <laughs> Been, been cutting the potatoes. Сказать, что большие кусочки, да, не маленькие. Сначала еще. Ага. Если мы кладем картофель одновременно с капустой, либо раньше, тогда у нас капуста не сварится. Нужно сначала класть капусту, она станет почти готовой. Ага. Добавляй картофель. Не добавляй пока. Угу. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so one know-how number two from my mom. Uh, so, see, fish to be precise. Uh, oh, the fi Tracy, so the fish is raw and grated, or what is raw? The uh, vegetables should be raw and grated, yes. The haddock, grated haddock, so it's probably, um, I'm confusing the two. So, uh, know how, I really like, <laughs> he's happy already, just one small piece of beef and he's happy. So, know how number two from my mom. So, there is a, a really special order of adding uh, veg vegetables to your soup. So, if you want the cabbage to be cooked, you should add it first and boil it for some time. And only after that, you would add potatoes. So, you must have peeled your potatoes already. But even if not, that's all right. We're not in a hurry, as I said. 40 minutes and everything is ready in a nutshell. So, speaking of potatoes... My mom, which is basically know-how number three from my mom. Это третье know-how про картошку, про размер картошки. So, as you see here, the size of the potatoes. Um, some people, and I remember my grandma used to really dice the potato for, for borscht. And then I was just probably the very first thing I would eat from the borscht was, were the potatoes. I remember that just from my memory. I really have it imprinted in my memory the, the, the potato from Bosch. But my mom says that the broth and the soup taste much better if you don't really cut it into, if you don't really dice it, but you cut it in halves or maybe in just, I don't know, like quarter of the size, something like that. Why? Because it wouldn't give out too much starch this way. That's what my mom says. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Можно даже добавлять картофель? So that's what my mom said. And I should tell you that my, I should tell you that, of course, um, well, like big, uh, big potatoes in soup is definitely not the classical version. And there will be some more know-hows from my mom. Uh, probably, сколько там know-how? Штук пять, наверное, да, будет? Подожди, еще не раскрывай все тайны. I'm not going to lay all the cards on the table now, but... So you see just one small piece of the leftover bit and you have this shade already, but it's really nothing compared to what it should be like. So uh, speaking of the vegetables, yes, it should be grated raw. Yes, definitely. You, you can't really grate the, uh, the, 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 the boiled, you can't really grate the boiled vegetables.
So is anybody cooking along? Just, just wondering. What I remember also from, from my childhood, just really wanted to share it with you. Uh, let me, so while, while potatoes are being cooked, so then let me just, let me just put it like this. Is that, oh, is that all right? Just let me know. Normal, I'm sure. Yeah, normal. Oh, Sandy. So yes, yes, it should be raw. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, Sandy. I, I, I didn't see, didn't see the question. So I remember from my childhood. Well, it was I was born in 1987. So while I'm talking, I still have time to. Like, if you haven't peeled it beforehand, that's all right. So we're not in a hurry, and I'm just going to be sharing some bits of my memories. And uh, I remember, like, it was the the, the years. Like in the, the early 90s, the perestroika, the collapse of the Soviet Union. So I was still born when it was the USSR, but of course I don't remember much of the pre-perestroika times. But I remember my first like really good memories. They basically date back to like 1992, 19, well 1991, 92, 93, and in those years they were really big. Um, many big issues in the country, and also with the food. There was not really much food. Да, вот я рассказываю про те годы, когда было мало еды. And uh, I also remember that um, people who didn't have households, they would pull the strings, they would find people who had households and who had also their dachas where they would grow some food like potatoes, cabbages, beets, carrots, these like basic vegetables, which are staples of, the, of Russian uh, cuisine. And I remember that every autumn, my family would buy... How many we bought for you? For the food? No, for the food, when we all had these rooms in the food. For the food. For the food. I think it was more. Maybe more. Uh -huh. So I, I remember, so we, we lived like in a big family, extended family. My parents, my grandparents, who already passed away. I remember them, they, they bought about, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe even more, because I remember there was a whole um, room, we had a spare room in an apartment, and the whole room was really covered in, in cabbages, you know, huge cabbages, and then they would, they would place the big table, and then a the huge shredder. And then they would shred the carrots, and then there will be the heaps of carrots. I'm not exaggerating of this size on the table. And then they would go and, uh, you know, uh, we just make the different kinds of preservatives for winter, which would be the only source of fiber during winter time when nothing is growing. I remember that. This is, it was something, it looked absolutely surreal. And I will never forget it. And then they would basically salt it. And what's the marinade capust? You can marinate it, but oh, I remember I them. I remember them. Just you make a sour cabbage or sour sauerkraut, which is common in many cultures, as I know, and uh, salt it. And then I remember those huge uh, jars uh, were like everywhere in the apartment. I remember that. So this is just the memory I wanted to share. А сколько должна у нас картошка вариться? Ну, минут 15-10 она будет вариться. Ага. Можно, если вы... Какой размер? Протыкаешь. Протыкаться должно быть. Угу. Она не разваривает. Yeah, I've just asked my mom how long should it take before the potato is ready. So she says... From 10 to 15 minutes, but it also depends on the size of the potatoes. So basically, you know, uh, that you just, you can use a toothpick just, just to, just to try it, right? So, and if it's soft enough for a toothpick, then it's ready. Let me check there's something on the chat. Just by the chat. Sorry, uh, let me scroll through the chat. Just, oh, so May, oh, May, hi. Uh, I didn't see you join. Thank you so much for joining. Nice that Anna's English is not corrupted by Americanisms. <laughs> um, I actually, um, 
I, I used to think that, I actually I still think that uh, there is still a, a mixture of American, British, and many other kinds of English that I picked up on throughout my guiding and interpreter's career. But what I've never thought of that uh, I would be, <laughs> I would be running cooking classes, you know, like cooking shows. And probably my mom also never, never thought of it. Когда не подумала, что ты будешь вести кулинарное шоу на английском языке. Well, you know, looking at my mom cooking it, and I'm, yeah, I actually remember watching all those cooking shows. You know, of course, it's nothing like Gordon Ramsay or, um, well, uh, Anthony Borden, who's uh, who was and will always be one of number one chefs for me, and not only. And I, and now now I I just I realize how not easy it is to arrange it and to cook it when you're filmed, and it's very different from how you would cook it at home as well. <laughs> so, do you have a dream in English? Oh, Barbara, мне спрашивает, которая с котиками снять или не снять на английском. Actually, yes. Yes, I've been learning English for long enough, you know, to have dreams in English. <laughs> so Catherine is cooking a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Liz. Catherine, uh, good luck with that. Uh, что у нас uh, с uh, луком? So uh, uh, for now, it's just it would be enough to just peel the onions. We still haven't, uh, our carrots and beets still haven't landed yet, you know, there to the borscht. Uh, but uh, before, before ending up in borscht, we need to cook them. So you take this, the sizzler, basically, and my mom is using butter, and the butter is also included in the recipe, in the tour description. You can use olive oil, you can use any kind of... Uh, any kind of oil fact that suits you, but from uh, like my mom really thinks that uh, adding butter and cooking with butter is a good idea. Um, I like it. I like my mom's borscht. So uh -huh. yes, and now it's time to cook the grated, raw grated beets and carrots. Сначала свекла, да, идет? Uh -huh. uh -huh. So it's just, so it's just one sizzler. I, oh, it looks, wow. I like the colors. I like the colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, um, not, не нужно, не нужно So we're gonna stew it. So it shouldn't be, Let's say it shouldn't be the, the heat shouldn't be very high, so just very low heat. Let's put it this way before it starts sizzling. Know how number probably four from my mom. Подожди, potato, uh, not potato, tomato. So there is this thing. Um, my mom likes adding. It's actually my mom's secret. Maybe it's not only my mom's, but I like to think that it's my mom. Подожди, <laughs> hold on. It takes me some time to explain it. Подожди. So. Uh, my mom likes adding tomato to borscht, but without, without the, the, yes, she likes to peel it. So without this uh, skin, do you call it a skin? So now we're going to place the tomato inside uh, to boil a little bit in the, uh, in the broth. Because after that, uh, it will be easily peeled off. Начинает, да, уже немножко? Mm -hmm. So now it's time to start dicing the onion. So just half an onion in our case, but you can add more, as I said. Oh, pickled beets. А ты когда-нибудь съела uh, соленую свеклу? Маринованную. Маринованную. Да. А, маринованную. Yes, pick, yes, pick, yeah, of course, pickled. Yeah, pickled beets. My mom says she, she tried it and she liked it. I've never tried it. I, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I see. So my mom has tried sort of the, uh, the assortment of vegetables, like pickled vegetables. So she, I really like pickled, uh, pickled garlic. That's what I really like. So 
I like this. I like the colors. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As I said, you, you wouldn't want to really fry it. Once it starts sizzling, uh, it's basically time to cover it with the lid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but if you want to stew it, of course, you, you, need, you would need some more uh, fluid. So what you can do, the options are, you can either use just water, like in my mom's case. Yeah. Chut chut, just a little bit. Chut chut in Russian, just a little bit. Chut chut. But you could also, if you have like two, if you have too too much broth, you can easily add some bits of broth there to the sizzler. <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. Um, what is it that you're referring to? Colleen. <laughs> okay. Когда мы будем добавлять э, мясо? На каком этапе? Можно, да? А когда помидору? So now you've seen that we've added meat. Uh, around this at this stage so when you're more than halfway through with your borscht you can put the meat back already the well cut diced whichever the word would apply here so you add it to the board to your borscht you, you you wouldn't want to cook it like for too long because but however if you like it very soft then you could you could place it in the very beginning but we don't really like it that's that boiled and very soon we will be taking out the tomato but there is no how number i lost the count uh from my mom the the chili pepper the hot chili pepper so uh, my mom has the green one you can add basically you can add you can add any any kind of pepper you like and if you don't like spicy food i don't really think it would be it, it won't be spicy but it will just add some taste and it would make your your borscht even richer so it would definitely especially if you're cooking a veget my gimbal is going a little bit crazy so um if you're cooking vegetarian borscht it would definitely add some some shades to the taste so how how much uh-huh ну конечно можно больше если хочешь острее да Mm -hmm. So mom says that it's up to you. My mom just used um, the size of the of the pepper and she diced, diced it. So very, very small pieces. Yes, the smaller the better. Yes, yes, I've only given you the ingredients. Yes, I, I haven't I haven't uh, told you how to cook it because it would have taken like too much time and like why watching? <laughs> So there's just some techniques that my mom uses and I have never even seen it before. Will it matter too much if we leave the chili, uh, chili out? Yeah. No, 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 Shayla. This is absolutely fine if you just, uh, if, you, if you say that you don't really like chili. That's absolutely fine. This is my mom's know-how. Actually, uh, you know, uh, there are so many kinds of borscht and now my mom's taken the peel off, which is very easy. I'm sure you know that if you add tomatoes, uh, not, not unpeeled tomatoes to any dish, it might give some uh, even bitterness, a little bit of bitter taste to the food. So it's always a good option to, to peel it. And the easiest option is to boil it a little bit and then it's ready. Or you just could pour the, the hot boiled water for some time, like about a kettle, and it also should be fine. So there are, there are about 70 recipes as of uh, early 20th century of how many, uh, so 70 versions of borscht as of early 20th century. And now I think there are about hundreds of them, really, really, really hundreds. 
And uh, so some Ukrainian borscht, some, okay, kinds of Ukrainian borscht, especially cooked before mid 19th century. I remember from like different cookbooks, and I also did some some reading. Uh, some of the recipes uh, would even use like three kinds of meat, uh, even chicken, uh, beef, and pork. So and sometimes borscht could take you for about uh, two hours. Yeah, to cook it because of so many ingredients, as I said. Um, a little bit in a while, I will tell you uh, uh, about um, the interesting story of Russian food. The, the, I would say sort of the adventures of, uh, of food <laughs> um, throughout the Soviet, Soviet era. So let's see what my mom has just done to the tomato. Sorry, mom. Yeah. И вот сейчас добавляешь куда? Сюда. Ага. And now my mom uh, is adding it here to the stew. Okay. I like the colors and I'm already drooling. So you would want to add some more fluid, water or broth. Yes, watching mom preparing is so wonderful. Колин uh, говорит, что так классно смотреть, как ты, как ты готовишь. Oh, thank you so much, Colleen. Спасибо. Спасибо. Thank you. А сколько, сколько вообще должно тушиться? So how long would you want to stew it? So mom says about uh -huh, on, on low heat because as I, uh, as I said, uh, it should be, well, we have gas here. Um, it, should, it shouldn't be fried uh, and it should be stewed. So you should cook it on low heat. This is better than Food Network. <laughs> really. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Как думаешь, сколько нам еще? Совсем чуть-чуть. Совсем чуть-чуть. Как у вас там получилась картошка? Ага, so now my mom... Сейчас? Oh, Barbara, thank you so much for the tip. Thank you. Thank you for the tipping. So my mom is now checking if the potato is ready. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Thank you. You're so kind. Uh -huh. So mom says that... А почему он ушел, кстати? Ah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Quite a revelation to me now. Okay, revelation number one or know-how number seven. I don't know. So one mom is taking out all the potatoes because it's already really nicely done. That's really, really, really boiled enough. So you see that this uh, sort of purple shade has disappeared. So the thing is that you you can't really you wouldn't boil beet for too much because after like too like too much boiling the shade disappears that's it it gets destroyed that's why there's just nice warning if you want to heat uh, your borscht like heat it up don't boil for too long so once it starts boiling you just stir a little bit and then you just swoosh it off and this is exactly why the beets already stewed would be added just in the very end. So now my mom is dicing the, the boiled potato. But again, as I said, you can add this, this diced potato raw one just to the borscht. And this is also, this would be fine. Apart from the chili pepper, do you use any ready-made combinations of borscht spices? Um, мам, а есть ли какие-нибудь э, специальные наборы трав там для борща, там приправы какие-нибудь? Конечно, продаются, но в основном это чеснок, uh -huh. это петрушка, укроп, uh -huh. лист, ну, и чуть-чуть соли. Uh -huh. Ну, сухие, да, ты имеешь в виду? Петра, thank you so much for the question. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Petra. Um, sweet potato instead of potato. Okay, just a moment, Sheila, I will get to that. Uh, so um, my mom said you can find different, you know, like combinations of dried herbs and spices, but basically, uh, no, yeah, you can, you can add, можно, можно добавить, yes. Yes, you can just add it as you go. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
and basically it would look like this so what we have here which is also in the in the description for the tour sparsely garlic uh, bay leaf as well but bay leaf uh, we've used it for for the for the broth it was used for the broth basically this would be it so very very plain very basic vegetables and you see my mom after after uh, your potato landed there back to borscht already diced and while it's still being stewed for about 10 15 minutes uh, my mom is uh, getting down to cutting all the green stuff you can actually add можно же любые да в принципе любую зелень да добавить Mm-hmm. So uh, my mom said that you can add basically any kind of um, any kind of uh, herbs, uh, but she, uh, почему, почему не кинза? Why not oh, oregano? Ah, so um, there basically there are just difference between uh, them that uh, some of the green stuff you can boil, but some not. For example, uh, you can't really boil oregano; it wouldn't make any sense, and it would probably taste awful but when it gets to parsley uh fennel and things like that this is all right you you can even add green onions you can even add uh, what else you can add anything indeed anything really it's up to you but probably you know it better if you like eating certain kind of herb or spices you definitely know how to cook them better that's the thing Yeah, bay leaves. Yeah, bay leaves. We add bay leaves to the broth. Uh, so um, in in the tour description, there was a separate recipe for the broth. So we use it when we boil meat together with an onion and a carrot. And if you remember, so we've just uh, taken. Uh, we, we took them. Uh, um, we, we took them. А мы выкинули, да? Морковку и лук мы выкинули. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, you wouldn't need them afterwards. When the when it's ready, you just get rid of uh, uh, the boiled carrot and onion. You just get rid of them. My mama is a, a very, very quick chopper. <laughs> Can you say chopper? I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, she's, she's very quick. So now uh, you're getting down to garlic. You see... Um, Well, I really like garlic, and uh, I could even use more. I, I could do it even with like three, or maybe even four gloves. But it's really, really up to you. I, I know that not everybody is a fan of garlic. I can totally understand. <laughs> uh, dill, um, dill. Uh, you can you can use it as well. Yes, why not? Why not? Again. I don't. I can't really say when it's best time to use it. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, everyone, for the pink boxes. Thank you so much. So, uh, just about a minute ago, my mom switched off these two, and yeah, so it's still cooking. But that's all. So now, before adding, before adding, yeah, probably yeah, Galina. Oh, thank you, Galina, and hi. Yes. Probably dill should be added uh, at the very end. When you still boil or when you switch it off? Horseradish. Well, Tracy, I don't... How do you think a can go to the borscht? I think yes. Yes? 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 That's my mom. You see my mom's face talking about horseradish. This is my mom's horseradish face. <laughs> mom, you're so you're so fun. Oh my goodness. So um, my kids have just shouted. They can't understand not using garlic. They love it. Current, very good. So garlic is very good for you. Way to go, kids. Way to go. Go on. Thank you so much. So uh, borscht has been just switched off. Uh huh. Yes, so now this is this, hold on, a magic moment when you add the stew to your borscht. Oh. <laughs> Candy, thank you so much. Yay! This magic moment. Magic, 
moment when the borscht is ready. <laughs> it's very thick. It's very rich. Сейчас подожди, это важно. So I was just about to tell you about the garlic and uh, some other kinds of herbs and spices that you might want to use. So some of them are very good to add after you swish it off. So like garlic, for example, I'm sure many knows it, but I need to, I need to uh, say it again. So garlic is good to be used when it's not boiled. So when it's, everything is ready and it's switched off. Oh yes, I'm drooling. I really wish I could somehow, you know, transmit the smell. Oh, mom, this is so gorgeous. Oh, wow. So the garlic is there. So it just gives off everything it has. And it, uh, when it's not boiled, it just would never give you this bitterness. And then this parsley. But again, anything you would want. <laughs> Expressive face of oh, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Yes. This is this is good and bad at one of the same time because it gives you more wrinkles, unfortunately. So basically our borscht is ready. The good thing is you just leave it to rest just for at least for a little while. In our case it will be just like five minutes. Uh because well because there are just 15 minutes left before the tour ends. So, and while my mom is preparing the table, she's like, so she's gonna serve it nicely. And my mom is so good at all these things. And, I, and I'm a failure. I'm, I'm not really good at serving the table and everything. There are just a few stories I really wanted to share with you. <laughs> Karen, well, everybody knows this song. I think it's such an, such an old ditty, such a lovely ditty. Anyway, so while my mom is still the book of so готов, да я пока сейчас расскажу интересную историю. So I would I would like to tell you about sort of a rivalry between a Russian and Ukrainian kinds of borscht. Of course, it's like it's a joke, it's a joke, but yes, I acknowledge and most Russians acknowledge this is a Ukrainian dish that came to Russia. And yeah, we've been off and on with Ukraine, like, but I'm not talking about politics. Basically, I believe is that borscht is kind of is the kind of things that unites the two nations. And I should tell you that basically Russia, the history of Russia, Russia stems from Ukraine because there was a Kiev and or a Kiev and Rus or Rus. We call it Kievska Rus. And there are so many, uh, well, there are so many great tours by my colleague um, in Ukraine. I'm, I'm sure you know even more than, than I know about the history of Ukraine. So, but uh, there is an interesting story that uh, happened in the 20th century in the Soviet times. So this was the very interesting time for Russia uh, and for the Soviet Union. I'd like to share with you a few things. <laughs> let me also go over the chat, but it's better to let it rest. Yes, uh, Galina, you are quite right. It's better to let it rest for for a few hours, but most probably very, you, you probably don't have this much time, like we don't really have, but my mom said that the next day borscht is even better, even more delicious. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Do most people cook with gas? Uh, in St. Petersburg, it's mostly gas. Uh, it's just, it's just the history, you know, um, it's mostly gas. But not like not really everywhere, but mostly, yes, yes, yes. That's right. Yeah, I really, really wanted to join Olga's tour, and I had no idea when I scheduled my tour that. Можно еще покажу? Let me show you. Watch just, just one more time. Uh, um, I had yeah, I, I, but I couldn't join her. I had my my tours yesterday as well. Oh, just look at that. Oh, so that's, that's the color. That's, that's the color. <laughs> right, right. Borsch is much better on the second day. I wanted to just tell you uh, quite quickly the history, like when, when the Borsch basically became sort of a Soviet dish. So when the Soviet Union was 
founded, which happened in 19, after 1922, 1923, when the civil war was finally over and it started after the revolution. So I talk a lot about revolution during my revolution tours. And there are going to be a few more. There are going to be a few more revolution tours if you're interested. And, uh, well, finally, the Soviet Union was established. And then Lenin died next year, uh, 1924. And then Stalin came over, right? So <laughs> Stalin got over the problem. He, was, he had always been there. And Stalin basically needed to think how to unite the country because the Soviet Union was a huge country with so many, with so many different nationalities and peoples living, and it was very difficult to unite them. Well, in a nutshell. So there is one gentleman over here, Anastas Mikoyan. Anastas Mikoyan was uh, the minister of uh, food, um, yeah, of like food industry. He also was the minister of uh, internal affairs for some time, uh, and also some foreign affairs and foreign trade. Yeah, so he, he dealt with foreign trade. So Anastas Mikoyan was given a special task. So mom is going to start serving the uh, serving borscht. So Anastas Mikoyan was sent uh, to the U.S. to go and find out how to start uh, how to start uh, production, like mass production of different kind of food. And uh, he spent quite a long time in the U.S. and he brought so many things. It's not about the borscht yet. Have a look. You really like hamburgers. Have a look. So this is the the pre-war. Um, I don't really know, like a poster advertisement of um, <laughs> Russian version of hamburgers. Basically, it says Moscow patties uh, on a bun, which is basically 50, 50 kopecks. Yeah, Mikoyan was Armenian. That's right. And there were so many innovations that he brought, like uh, mass production of um, fridges. Yeah, so he was he was really amazed that uh, every household and uh, nearly every household had fridge and so many other things. And there was one more project that was important for just to unite the nations to come up with a number of dishes that would unite the country. And this is when a special cookbook was issued. Um, published. Kniga of Kusne Zarove Pish. So the book of delicious and healthy food. When dozens and probably yeah, hundreds of dishes from all across the Soviet Union were picked up and um, simplified and um, basically the ingredients that you could only find in the region would be substituted with the um, ingredients you can find everywhere. So, and this is exactly the moment when the Ukrainian borscht stopped just being Ukrainian and became the Soviet dish. And uh, so that's, that's the kind of borscht. Again, so right now you could uh, put oregano, dill, uh, my mom says that speaking of horseradish, so somebody asked me about the horseradish. Yeah, it looks really, yeah, it's really, really yummy. Uh, it looks yum. So you, uh, the good idea would be to uh, put some horseradish on your plate and then, uh, hold on, uh, and then pour your borscht on it. So that, that, that's how the horseradish would give off everything it has. And there was one more thing about Russian cuisine that Russians really, really like to add sour cream everywhere. I know it's not really kosher to use, well, to, to eat dairy products with uh, meat, obviously, and it's not really healthy, but Russians have survived no matter what. And this is true. We can add... Uh, I think we can add uh, sour cream even to fish soup. А можно же добавить сметану в уху? А фины добавляют. Может быть, это финская. Мы, мы добавляем водку для прозрачности. И манку. А, водку? Да, ее прям чуть-чуть совсем. Она... Куда водку добавляем? Водку. This is my mom's vodka face, you see. <laughs> so, um, you know that there is a Finnish soup, um, like Finnish fish soup, and they use cream. 
And I remember from my, my childhood, somebody, some of my family members would add sour cream to the fish soup. I remember it. But mom says she, she doesn't like it. So she wouldn't add it. I probably it's, probably a bit a bit reckless to add sour cream to a fish soup but she said that you can add vodka to a fish soup like russian fish soup uha we call it um yeah so vodka also uh is everywhere around you so speaking of borscht so mom uh, could you please add sour cream so mom already understands some english very very good and and to me yes to mine please to my plate as well <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Da, da, da. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's do it like this. Oh, yeah. If you could share the postcards of this lovely, lovely borscht, my mom's borscht, that would be really awesome. Look at that. So, my mom, so what do you think? Ну, как, как тебе? Да. <laughs> good? Is it good one? Okay, let me, let me also try it. Надо попробовать. Надо попробовать. Okay, so let's give нет, it a try. Нет, да? нет нормальных да? Okay, so I'm not really sure. Yeah. Okay, let me also try it. Let me try my borscht, my mom's borscht and my borscht. This is my borscht, my precious borscht. Borscht, borscht, borscht. Mm, this is so good. <laughs> Mom, так круто, спасибо. This is so good, so, so good. <laughs> oh, let me go over the chat. <laughs> Oh, oh, Jalil, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the support. Uh, salt was added to the broth. So it was, it's also, um, but you can start with the broth. And if you think that salt is not enough, you would just, you would add it at any, any time, really. Yeah, so, but basically it's about, it, it's for the broth because this is then when the meat would have the, the taste, it, it should be, it should, it should have basically this. And speaking of how, what, what you can eat it with. So you can eat it with the like kind of classical recipe would be some uh, rye bread with uh, salo, which is pig's grease. But this is, uh, this is the Ukrainian thing. Uh, but Russians like it. Russians actually like Ukrainian food, I should tell you. And I believe this is, this is what unites us. So this would be a very good, very good side dish for your borscht. But actually, I think that the meat inside, just the beef inside the borscht it, it is already, is already good enough. Oh, look who, is, who we've got here. Soma, are you going to have some borscht too? Simon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just before we wrap it up, uh, so me and my mom and probably Simon as well. Come here, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh, I'm not sure for how long he's going to stay with us. So, um, yes, me, my mom, Simon and some Borsch, we would like to really thank you for joining our, our tour, our Borsch cooking class. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for the tipping. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, right now, just in one minute, my colleague from Moscow, who's also Anna, is going to run her su uh, subway station, her, her metro station tour. And I'm going to watch it while munching my borscht. My borscht. Uh, so if you haven't booked it yet, and if you have some, uh, some free time, and if you feel like, make sure you join the tour. And my Christmas tours are already up, all of them. Next week, I'm taking you to a special museum. So make sure you check out uh, my channel on Hago. If anybody could share the link, it would be also great. And uh, there will be more news very soon. Hopefully, very soon I'll be able to announce something really big. Let's see how it goes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's do it like this.
Just one more look on our borscht. Nima, we'll see any scam to a borscht. Have my, have my borscht, don't worry. This looks a bit messy, but thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'd really love to see all the postcards. Thank you so much for the tipping. Thank you so much for all the support. My mom, it, my mom is very grateful, really. My mom is very grateful to you. It's, it's a big deal for her, you know. Thank you so much and bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.